You are listening to When Therapists Watch TV, where we discuss today's buzzworthy TV shows and what they can teach us about ourselves, our relationships, and the world around us. I'm your host, Dr. Terry Bly, licensed clinical psychologist at Ellie Mental Health. Today we're talking about Ted Lasso, the series, here on season one, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about the actual character Ted Lasso and where that optimism that we love about Ted Lasso maybe intersects at times with what I would say is more what people might refer to as toxic positivity. Does he cross that line into toxic positivity? And if so, when? And what are some repercussions? And how would, might we know ourselves when we're being optimistic and being positive and when we might be treading into that more toxic positivity area. And we're gonna be talking about Ted Lasso as an example for that. So my guest today, um, I brought in two mental health experts. I have Dr. Lucas Fellini and Scott, shit, Chromebook. Chromebush. <laughs> I don't know why my brain just like, okay. Scotty. Scott, Scotty, we know him Scotty. Yeah. So, um, and Scott, remind me again, what is your, are you, Marriage and family, LPCC. LPCC, L yeah. LPCC. I should do my yeah. homework next no, time. I should that's, do how do you my keep it all homework. straight? I don't know. Anyway, so I brought you guys in because I know you've both watched the show. Mm -hmm. And that when talking to each of you a bit about it, I got the impression that you each had very different takeaways from the show, specifically about Ted Lasso's character. Scott, you are known throughout Ellie as being a big fan of Ted Lasso mm -hmm. and embracing his character and even dressing up like Ted Lasso mm -hmm. when you're coaching your kids. Mm -hmm. Lucas, I got the impression that maybe you had a little more concern about yeah. Ted Lasso and that positivity and where maybe you, uh, you don't think it's so positive. Yeah, and I think that's one of the interesting things about the show, which I really enjoyed watching, was like every time the show pushed me to the brink of being like, all right, this is too much, or it's like, it's becoming unbelievable because they're not addressing this issue. It's like the next episode, they would address mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, I, I think I'm someone who struggles with excessive positivity in general. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with my existential misery that I perpetually live in, <laughs> um, all right, that's especially fair. in the mornings. Mm -hmm. You know, morning people. <sighs> Maybe we should look at a correlation between morning people and general positive. Are yeah. you a morning person, Scott? Yeah. You so. feel, you strike yeah. me I as somebody who'd yes. be a morning person. I would have guessed, Kind of a yes. sky's the limit guy, right? Yeah. right out of the gate. Hop right out of bed and... Yeah. It makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Blessing and a curse, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, and I think with, um, and I think for me, and this was definitely an experience of watching Ted Lasso was, like people who are always, you know, kind of, bubbly, lively, bright, you know, it's like I need to see their humanity. Mm. Like I can't, mm -hmm. Yeah. there's no way that that's how they are and who they are 24 seven around the clock with complete mm. authenticity. Um, and so just as, you know, kind of Ted's character, which I think at first when it was portraying him as a coach, like it was wonderful, it was great, it was refreshing, you know, especially, you know, with how unnecessarily negative and brutal and kind of a aggressive some coaches can be in their philosophy which it's like I've never found that to be effective and so I loved him as a coach but then as it started to portray him in his personal life outside of coaching and he operated under the exact same principles it's mm -hmm. like that's when I started to question it's like who who is Ted Lasso really right so Scott tell me about what it is that you like about the positivity that mm -hmm. Ted brings? Yeah, I actually see Ted is pretty authentic, actually. So I, I think I appreciate Lucas is hinting at it a little bit of, it, it seems a little less traditional on the coaching sector, right? Where you think about a team and it's just fight to the end and, you know, uh, be aggressive in your discussions and motivate, you know, go, go, go. Um, I actually really appreciated the, the genuineness that I see out of Ted, right, of relatability and, um, you know, it cries with the players a little bit, right, and, and really feels it, right, and I, I think that that probably sparks some curiosity for folks, so I, I appreciate that side of Ted, especially from the coaching side of it. Um, I, I do see also um, some carryover, you know, in the, in the character, which I also like, right, is I think that there is that genuineness that I see in him 
everywhere he goes, right? Um, and, and certainly his sidekick, coach, um, brings that out of him too. So I think that I, I, I'm actually enjoying very much seeing the, who Ted is as a coach and how it parlays into his daily life. So I, I feel like I'm seeing it more than maybe others are. And maybe that's the coach side of me that lives that experience and sees like, man, I mean, you can be that genuine, right? And, and that's okay. Yeah. Right? It, there might, it might not be clinical. Right? So when I first started watching it, I, I found myself calling it like, you know, the antidepressant of, te of television mm -hmm. because I would watch it and I would just feel better yeah. at the mm -hmm. end of every episode. Mm -hmm. And it was because of that positivity that the way he approached conflict, the way he approached, you know, getting pushed back from Rebecca and, you know, the way she treated him. And I just, I loved seeing him let that roll off of him and still respond with kindness and still respond with that, you know, I'm, I'm showing up. And the way I viewed it was him showing up as like, these are my values and I'm going to show up this way because I've decided to be this kind of person in the world and it doesn't matter what you throw at me, you're not going to get me to stop being this person. And I really appreciated that. And Lucas, to your point, there were times in his personal life where I thought, oh, but now I feel like maybe he's using this to stick his head in the sand a little yeah. bit or not really address the uncomfortable emotions that are in front of him. Mm -hmm. That when is this just showing up as his values and being positive and, and, and not letting the negativity weigh him down? And when is it him doing more of a, yeah, no, let's just, let's just paint this in a yeah. better light so that blinders. I don't have to blinders feel uncomfortable positive. with what's in mm -hmm. front of me. And yeah. that's, I'm wondering if that's, something you, you're kind of speaking to at all, Lucas, yeah, or if you've got a different... You know, I, I think, I mean, there, there's a ton of complexity, like super brilliant writing mm -hmm. uh, with all the characters and how everything interplayed. And I, the first initial contrast that stood out to me, which, again, initially watching the show, I loved Ted Lasso, I loved the show. It's like understood what everybody's been talking about all these years. Um, especially considering that, like, the context that Ted was brought into was like him being used as a pawn mm -hmm. for someone to stick it to their yeah. ex-husband. You know, like he was set up to fail. But then when he came in with, with such sincere, genuine mm -hmm. goodness and positivity, I think that just the way that that started to complicate things for everybody was super interesting. Uh, but one of the, like going back to like the duality of life, you know, there is darkness to the world, whether we like it or not. And he does seem to be very intentional to blind himself to that. And one of the things that I think made that most evident was, especially in season one, like you start to pick up on this kind of passively, but I put the, pe the these two puzzle pieces together pretty quick, which was, it's like this kid's got a son, yeah. a young son in the mm -hmm. United States that he just left, you mm -hmm. know? And I, I think it would fair, it's fair to say abandoned uh, to go pursue his dream, mm -hmm. you know? And so hmm. it's like, that was something that I had to, I needed the show to help me reconcile as I stayed yeah. with it because it's like, I want to believe Ted Lasso is as good of a person as he comes off as. Mm -hmm. But it's really hard for me to, especially a man, to attribute goodness to him when he's being a horrible father. Right. I wanna uh, yeah. maybe ask a question there. Please. Um, so I, I guess I'm curious about, you know, not in a critical sense, but sort of to the, to cut to the point wondering what people are looking for from Ted, right? Because uh, I would say that I would, I would venture a guess that maybe 90% of the people that are in tenure, getting to a tenure coaching job at a level that's like a, a division one college or professional are living away from their parents or their family. Oh really? So that's pretty Yeah, common. like I, I, just locally right now, like mm -hmm. people that I, I work with and, and call mentors, um, their families are in a different state. They just, they oh, just wow. moved here for their dream job in like the hockey world, right? And so, and I think they're fantastic people. Mm -hmm. And I think they're great parents and actually uh, are maybe teaching some things too about like, don't be afraid of the barrier, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe that's where this positivity discussion comes in being like, I'm not really afraid of the challenge, right? I think that we're bigger than the challenge and um, my heart's bigger than the space, right? And I think that's why this discussion's so good, right? Is there's so many different perspectives. Yeah. So when I hear the, you know, the challenge on Ted for going across the pond um, to pursue his dream and take on a challenge that was foreign to him, uh, I, I didn't see that at all. I was okay. just like, wow, this is normal for someone to find an opportunity okay. and go 
you know, pick up and go. And that's what the family supports because that's what makes them happy, right? And Interesting. So, and not that his wife and kid, right? There's some mm -hmm. scenario there. They're not happy. Um, right, but but yeah. I think, you know, that's the way I looked at it, right? It's sort of like, hey, man, this is, um, it's okay to, to, to do what he was doing as far as the coaching side of it, right? So. It's interesting because I, I have a slightly different take from mm -hmm. each of you on it mm -hmm. as I saw it as him struggling so much with that rejection, with that you're not good enough that his wife was giving him and not and it's like, fine, you want your space. Mm -hmm. I will go to the other, I will go to a different continent mm -hmm. because I, I'm the way I read into it is he couldn't handle staying in it while she was mm -hmm. unhappy with him, that he couldn't maybe deal with it. Like even when she, oh, Spoiler alert. There are going to be spoilers. I should have mentioned that there will be spoilers in here. So turn it off now if you don't want um, spoilers. When she don't comes. Don't turn it off. Subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Watch the show, then come back. Mm -hmm. um, when she comes there and she just, she talks about like, I, I want to have that back that I felt in the beginning of a relationship. And I just don't. His I wanted him to fight. I wanted him to do more. But instead he's, I felt like that need to be positive and supportive and loving and all of that caused him to just bail and say, oh, well, I want you to be happy, so go, just let's just be done. And that's where I thought, what if he just let himself sink into the, the uncomfortable? What if he let himself stay there in the pain a little longer? Mm -hmm. Because she was, to me, she, I didn't hear that she was done. I heard that she was still struggling. Maybe there was still some ambivalence there. And I heard him say, yeah, I can't really work with ambivalence, so let's just, Let's yeah. just call it. Yeah. And that's where I wonder, like that positivity and that, and that, that stance, that persona of being loving and supportive and just wanting to everyone to do the, what's best for them and support and nurture that. If, yeah, if maybe sometimes that just leads, can lead a person astray a little if they can't. And if they're not willing to adapt, yeah. you know, and change. And I could see how Ted would be in, because of, how he's organized, how he would be an incredibly difficult person to be married to. Yeah, you know, Because right. it sounds like he, there was almost like an insistence on his end for people to like join him at his level mm -hmm. of positivity and how he operates when it's like we know very well that in, especially like enduring intimate relationships, it's like you need to go into each other's pain. Mm -hmm. You need to dedicate time to be with one another in that. And I can't imagine that his wife was getting a shred of that. And so the show never got to portray this, but you know, like I would be curious about how engaged he was as a dad when he was home and present, because mm -hmm. he was still doing his thing coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, even what you were talking about before too, Scotty, like the culture of, I didn't know the culture of coaching and maybe, I don't know if it's distinct to hockey or whatnot, uh, was that rigorous and that demanding, especially when it comes to relocation, it makes sense when you say that. But I also kind of heard you describe people you know who have families that are fully supportive of that, they get it, you know? And so like in that context, I could see how, I mean, that's how military families organize, you know, essentially it's like, we understand why this parent is doing this, which takes them away from the family. And you kind of raise the kid within that cultural system to see the honor in it. And then when they do return, they're engaged, you know, and try to compensate for lost time. Um, but Ted left a strained family system. What do you think about that? Got about the leaving the the way he mm -hmm. handled his marriage falling apart yeah. and and with that view of because again I guess what I'm wondering is I, I heard the phrase relentless optimism being used to describe mm -hmm. him and I liked that relentless optimism mm -hmm. and I was wondering like when is optimism and positivity so relentless that it doesn't allow for kind of I mean, messy yeah pain of life? I'm glad you said that because I think preparing for today, I looked into some of the things other people have said or have mm. have uh, published on the, the topic. And I, I think there's a, a little bit of a line in the sand where I think it can be toxic or non-productive when you minimize it, right? Sort of that whole, you know, you hear this maybe from trauma people sometimes where something significantly happened, so, sorry, something significant happened, and then somebody says, hey, it'll be okay, mm -hmm. you know, just that quick right. over it, right? Or, mm -hmm. hey, don't worry about it, that kind of like minimization, right? Versus, no, I got you, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and some mm -hmm. people just are wired that way, right? And I think when we think about Ted, like I can, I can think of a lot of examples in the show where he did hold some people accountable. I called him in, 
and didn't force them to be positive like him, but just sort of supported them and let them sort of process, right? And again, I know we're sort of asking that on the TED side. I think when we were talking about it here, I was thinking, are, what are we, are we requiring TED to be like us? Are we, why are we uncomfortable that hmm. TED copes? And is there a right way to cope? Because that's that might just be good for him, right? And that's okay. Like, in a way, as a therapist, too, like, I, I think this is a weird question maybe coming from me, but I don't know that if everything's clinical, right? And so everything is in a sense of, like, learn and like how you cope and behavior, I suppose. But I think I can see a lot of really good examples of Ted processing, right? Or, and then working his way to processing and thinking about family or even maybe coming to some realizations too, right? Like maybe we learn down the line that Ted has a realization like, hey, I, I do love sport, but I really, having supporting all these people and having a family kind of culture around me mm -hmm. makes me want to go back and fight, right? I, I don't know where, I don't know what it all takes, but I think I have a little more trouble being critical because I, I can see him doing work, right? It just maybe yeah. isn't as... Um, Obvious, maybe, I guess. You bring up a really good point, and I'm going to bring this back to what you said at the beginning, Lucas, is when it comes to people who are, who are very positive, who are optimistic, who bring that sunshine every day, when other people label it toxic, is it because it is, when is it toxic because, you know, again, maybe they're invalidating or they're using it to minimize, mm -hmm. and when is it our own discomfort? Mm -hmm with somebody who brings right. that every day right. because like you said you, that's not kind of your personality you've got more mm -hmm. of that I think would you call it existential dread, dread. Um, I, mm -hmm. I'm a very cynical person I struggle to bring that every day um, so what is it what aspect of that is just some of us who have that like I don't know like maybe we're bothered by it because we can't be like that or we don't want to be like that and so we pathologize it because it's not how we choose to show up or mm -hmm. I don't know I think that's if, an if, interesting if, question if, when someone drags too long we might ask why they're depressed right? mm -hmm. and maybe we're critical right and then if someone's happy too much we wonder what they're hiding <laughs> it's invasive <laughs> it's invasive and yeah it's toxic mm -hmm. right so it's sort of this the question may be born from why am I curious about it, and that's fine, right? Yeah. Um, and then not really to have an expectation of a change, but to maybe more understand it, right? I, I think on the, the coaching side where it comes in is it is kind of nice to see because it does go against sort of the grain in professional sports, him to be creative and sensitive. Oh yeah, his so, coaching style is brilliant. So that's that's nice, and I think there's some coping there. Mm -hmm. I w well, I think we would all probably like we're using the term toxic positivity because that's just the term that people use. That people use, you know, like, mm -hmm. and so yeah. Yeah. I don't think any of us agree with doing that. Like, I don't think we should label personality styles as toxic or untoxic. You know, so j I like to throw that out there. But working within that framework or I would say the framework I operate from is more along the lines of, is this helpful or is this not helpful? Yeah. You know, is this mm -hmm. constructive for them or does this yeah. kind of create more messes or keep them stuck? And I would say I had a different take on the extent to which his style was helpful because throughout the series, I think it became more and more apparent of how much his relationships around him were unsustainable, falling mm. apart, you okay. know, and that he was struggling. And I don't know if we plan on getting into uh, the season with the psychologist, but mm -hmm. my gosh, yeah. was she good. Yeah. She was yeah. so good. She was brilliant. And it's not common for me to be impressed by uh, a thera TV yeah, therapist. A TV therapist. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, yeah. But that was super well done. And I mean, her goal was like the work she did with Ted was essentially exactly what I was hoping Ted could eventually get mm -hmm. to, which was to find resources that would allow him to step into his uncomfortable, difficult emotions mm -hmm. and see the value in that and not be afraid of them, not be threatened by them and start to realize that if anything, I would say his capacity to open up and enter into a uh, difficult emotion would only strengthen his capacity to be positive uh, right. and how he looks at things with such grace and generativity. Uh, but I would imagine what he was stuck in was thinking that it would be a threat mm -hmm. to his positivity. Your thoughts, Scott, on that? Well, I, 
someone going to therapy, right? Yeah. Well, he was very yeah. squirrely about it yeah, in the beginning yeah. of season two. Like his mm -hmm. first, when they were talking about we should get a sports psychologist, you know, and his answer was, mm -hmm. yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, yeah. and he was very... For the players. For the players, yeah, even. Yeah. And so he was, you could see him squirming at the idea of therapy and he didn't want to do it. And he like made jokes when he would talk to Dr. Sharon and, mm -hmm. you know, well, I tried couples therapy, but we didn't like the other couple. And mm -hmm. so, you know, just the, his way of using that like, haha jokey thing, mm -hmm. that's when I saw it, saw it start to become more of a defense mechanism mm -hmm. than that more authentic positivity is he'd kind of joke and laugh it off and oh, I'm good and he'd make funny little jokes as he would leave her office mm -hmm. and still try to keep up that cutesy thing. But yeah. there it became really clear that now that's more of a coping strategy to avoid dealing with his own. Mm -hmm. And he was less funny. Like those yeah. jokes were less funny. And I'm just wondering, what do you think about that part, Scott? Like, Yeah, I mean, uh, again, here I agree on all of it and, and kind of go back to that context of how um, a lot of people have that sort of reaction or response when they start to feel out mm -hmm. therapy, right, or hadn't had success in the past or didn't feel like a natural match. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, that vulnerability, uh, you know, I can't speak for Ted, too, but, you know, I, I don't know what this is going to bring. Is this going to help or hinder our team, mm -hmm. right, or what's going to come of it, right? Um, um, yeah, I mean, I, I liked it that I loved the character, too. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I, she was great, right? Um, but I, I do see that sensitive side of Ted, which I think, again, is genuine. Um, I liked seeing him involved. Um, but I chalk it up to more just, you, you know, like and the local people that were there, the, you know, the players and the other staff that were engaging, like they were local players. They weren't, you know, from across the pond. They were uncomfortable too to a certain degree, and I think some jumped in. So I, I thought I didn't like overanalyze it, I guess. I think Ted was responding like Ted would have responded, right? Or so let me ask you this, Scott. That. Do you think optimism or positivity is ever the wrong way to deal with something? Well, I think that's loaded, right? Because I think <laughs> that's a good <laughs> it's question. It's a big question, yeah. but I'm just... So, no, but that's I what we're going to talk about today. I, I, I would yeah, like to I know. I think it has a spot, right? I mean, mm -hmm. and it's okay. Like, I think the question is, why do we think it can't? Well, but always. Like, is there ever an exception? Like, is when does it come... Can it become problematic, and when might that be? Well, anything can be problematic, you know. I In excess, yeah. right, right. Okay, so um, when can optimism or positivity yeah, yeah. become problematic? Well, if you're blind, but I don't think Ted is blind. What do you mean? Yeah, so I'm, like, I'm assuming so you don't mean like literally. So, so. how he feels, right? Mm. Like, so you I, don't think Ted is blind to how mm. he feels? No, I mean, I think I personally, I think I see examples of him, you know, reflecting and thinking back, and you know, um, realizing when. He lets down his, you know, even to meet for a beer, you know, takes his, takes too long, right? Or I think he's aware of those things. I mean, we could mm -hmm. all as therapists go, he can go deeper, right? Um, yeah, but I don't think he's too optimistic. Okay. Yeah, so I think okay. he's not, he's not blind to what he feels, but he's terrified of what he feels. That's okay. And he, I would, t oh gosh, yeah. I would this is so interesting. I feel like I'm in a case consult. Yeah. Because that's kind of what we're well, doing. Well, that's what we're doing. And that's everyone's what different show's therapeutic supposed to be, styles kind of show doing up. Case consultations yeah. And here. so, like, yeah. I'm not a strengths based therapist. Um, I think <laughs> strengths are wonderful, you know, and it's like if you already have a strength, it's like you, you know that, and I'll reflect that to you. And when it's useful, we can build from that. But, like, I, if, a, if my client hasn't cried by the third session, I've failed them. <laughs> okay. Like, maybe I can ask, maybe I'm not following the question entirely, but maybe I look for when do we have an opinion when we shouldn't be optimistic? Yeah. Yeah, like when, when or when is optimism not the appropriate response? When is positivity? And then who defines that? Yeah, like, I don't know. Tell me the rule the for my optimism. Well, again, I think it would come down to not necessarily a rule that can be rubber stamped, um, but a method of evaluation that can discern, like, was this helpful? Did this help to, you know, repair the relationship, improve upon the circumstance, you know, that brought about difficult emotion? Or does this person just seem to be using positivity to blind themselves to a problem, hoping it'll go away? Let me use this as an example. I've known some guys back in the dating years who were so committed to their 
view of themselves as, as a nice guy. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to say I usually only dated, I was never drawn to like the bad guys, drawn to a lot of nice guys. But I noticed that nice guys sometimes were so intent on being a nice guy that they would do things that were kind of shitty mm -hmm. because they couldn't just come out and say something that they thought might be hurtful. Mm -hmm. So they would do all of yeah. this other stuff mm -hmm. yeah. that, they, that you couldn't come right out and say, okay, that, that was an asshole move. But it was, but because they didn't have to be an overt asshole, they could still, it's still egocentric, right? It's still, see, I, I wasn't doing anything wrong. I just, I just didn't call her back. You so know, was and that, it wasn't being a jerk. Right. I just kind of yeah. didn't show. Fair. And I feel like with him, the, there's some of that. Like when the coaches wanted him to get rid of um, to Ben Shroy Kent, mm -hmm. and he just wouldn't. I got the sense that that was that line of like, but then I'm going to feel like an asshole, and I don't want to be that. So can't we just keep him in there so we can encourage him and like, you know, mm -hmm. give him his best life? But I always, I found myself wondering is. Did he not want to be in that position to be that guy? Yeah, and then what, what is that? Is that optimism or pessimism, right? Of, I don't want to say the right thing because someone's going to explode, right? And I'm not saying that's the way out. Just that when I'm thinking about those examples of, um, no, I've got this. Like, I feel confident in this. And again, not the dating side. You know, I'm thinking mm -hmm. about, like, Roy Kent and all that and the charge of a coach uh, to believe in people and find make the most of them right and treat them individually and that kind of thing and um, that's the charge there right um, so yeah no I, I love the question because I you know I'm thinking about it of the curious you know the curious side of me thinking about it and I you know I do think optimism has a place but that doesn't mean it has to be that way for everybody right that's just kind of how I'm wired right if mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it overshadows any other emotion at any given time or all the time it's just there right that's just kind of what I how I am right mm. and maybe Ted because when I see the video you think about the video the, the classic video of Ted dancing yeah in the locker room that yeah. was domestic right that was mm -hmm. before he went overseas mm -hmm. right so there was a that's how he was with the people before beforehand too yeah. right and so there's that carryover and we're maybe wondering well what was the escape all about right and what if it was just opportunity, right? What if it was just a career, right? Or that was the next job mm. that, you know, what if that was to keep working, right? What if, what if that was the decision too, right? So, so not just running away from his problems, yeah. but I mean, actually. Maybe there's part of it, right? But like, mm -hmm. there's other things too, right? You know, catalysts. Well, so let me ask you guys this. Do you think his panic attacks, I mean, we're, I don't want to go into like clinical what we know about panic attacks, mm -hmm. but the way the show is framed, do you think we are to understand that the panic attacks have to do with what you're talking about, oh, Lucas, yeah. about like his difficulty bridging that gap into mm -hmm. the darker places, to get mm -hmm. out of that positivity into the pain? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, panic attacks are it's a product of suppressed emotion, suppressed, unacknowledged anxiety that's been buried for so long that it comes out explosively. And which manifests as a panic attack. And even when the, like everything, again, like they consulted with the right clinicians on that one because the series of events going on in his life, there was this, he was starting to experience this convergence, you know, of like all the things he's neglected and ignored and avoided were kind of coming to a head. And that's where the panic came from. So like it's, I think that, and that was, that's something that really brought me back into Ted as a character and back into the show because it was like, okay, yes, like he is human. He is human. We're starting to see. Yeah. So what do you? What? How did you understand his panic? Attacks? No, I, I agree, right? Um, but I still think that that doesn't change the optimism side, right? Of no, and I don't think it's about changing optimism as much yeah. as considering the duality. You know, like yeah. does optimism need the balance of confrontations with brutal truths? to sustain itself over time and not become problematic. So yeah, positivity is great. I'm positive about some yeah. things sometimes, <laughs> I think. I positive. Once in a while I have positive yeah. moments and feel mm -hmm. good, yeah. Yeah, like I'm feeling positive about spring. That's gonna be great when it comes. <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm in on exactly how Luke, Lucas laid out the, the panic attacks, right? Okay. Like I get that. It's that vulnerability piece, it's, it's feeling big. Um, and again, it doesn't change, you're not suggesting otherwise, but I, I think that's, we're seeing that 
as, as Ted gets more comfortable with the new team, like it wasn't the honeymoon phase of a new role, new coach, new place, excitement, challenge, distraction, settling in, right? And it's starting to feel home. Now being finding himself becoming more connected with those anxieties and those worries. And that's where I'm like, I don't know where the storyline goes eventually. Yeah. Um, and again, doesn't beat down the optimism and all that stuff. But, you know, that's where I'm at with it is, I, again, the first question I answered when we started this was like, I just really appreciate seeing, I think from the start, I could see who Ted, I feel like I could see who Ted was in my eyes. Um, and the character, you know, you get sucked back in when you start to see more of that vulnerable side of him personally, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it's expanding, you know, the character for sure. So I guess, so my next and I don't know, my, my last question um, is, and this is gonna be probably more for you, Scott, but Lucas, please chime in. Um, when I was watching it, and the reason I would recommend it to a lot of my, uh, my clients was, I just, I wanted to have an understanding of, like when I would watch him and this, this way he was in the world and the way he handled pushback, I, would, mm -hmm. I was just fascinated mm -hmm. by this idea that somebody could be, you know, in a room with somebody like Rebecca, who's clearly like not receptive mm -hmm. to his way of being, to mm -hmm. his to positivity. His just the, yeah, yeah, and we just keep bringing <laughs> her these biscuits and she'd just shoot him down and he would, mm -hmm. and I just remember thinking, God, I wish I had more of that. Yeah. I wish, mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, I joke that my alter ego is just like, you know, cranky old lady is like, <laughs> yeah, oh, it doesn't nothing sure, matter, right. it's all just bullshit. Mm -hmm. And I, when I would smoker. watch it, right, yeah. and I'm not a smoker, um, but in my alter, my alter ego is definitely, yeah, definitely a three pack a day camel mm -hmm. kind of woman. Um, <laughs> and so what I'm wondering though is, like how is, is that just something you, is it a temperament thing? Is that how you're born? Or are there ways that we can that you think we can foster more of that? Like, sure. can we be more like sure. the, the, the good stuff about Ted? Can, mm -hmm. how, how, do you, how do you bring that more of that into, if you want to, yeah. if you look at that and you think, God, I wish I could be more positive mm -hmm. more of the time. Mm -hmm. Is that something you think is, is achievable? Hmm. Have you ever worked with clients on that? Or is this something that good can question. be cultivated? Or is right. this just, could you could you turn me into a morning person? <laughs> no. <laughs> no I agree. He's not a magician. So right. I know that. <laughs> no, I yeah, no, I love the question and it's deep, right? Of um Yeah, I mean it goes back to maybe where earlier in the conversation too of like how much of it's our discomfort or our curiosity about people that are maybe that way. I'm kind of that sense of when people are negative all the time. I'm like, man, like how's that, right? And what's the source of it, right? And again, it's a, whether clinical or not, right? Yeah. People are people, right? And so uh, I, I think the ultimate appreciation is uh, the curiosity and, and ambition of, man, I wish I had a little more of that in my life than what what can people do for that, right? That's what I'm wondering. What yeah, right, well, that's do? what I'm saying is like, what can, not it's on them sort <laughs> yeah. of a, you know, like to, to discover, you know, the happiness a little bit. I think for me on the coach side, not, because it is part of the discussion, mm -hmm. I think, right, is I, I, I think I take a lot of pride on modeling, uh, not using the coaching side of things in sports to, to show youth players some life lessons too, of like being bigger th mm -hmm. than the moment or you know, the, what are the, the things that we take from this that are our greater picture, right? Our self-control and like, you know, how to calm and you know, all the stuff that we probably work with clients. But that certainly doesn't mean that they'll be more optimistic because of it or that they'll become that way. I'm just offering that up and hoping that people around me maybe take some of those things in their own and run with it, just like I do from others around me. I take stuff and apply. Um, but I don't know, I mean, I think that's the, the, the why we're talking about TED is there's just more there it's, yeah. than most people. I've been thinking about it as, you know, when we're talking about coaching, when I've been working with my clients lately, and we, you know, we talk about that negative voice that everybody has, that critical mm -hmm. voice, Stutz called it, um, uh, per, Part X. Part X. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever you want to call it, inner critic, yeah. I call it inner bitch, like these, yeah. the, that yeah. negative voice. I've been thinking about Ted as that other voice that we, we try to build in ourselves and in our clients, that inner, that, that, that other way of coaching. And so when I've been talking to my clients, I've been talking about, you know, there's two styles of coaching. You get that one coach that tries to motivate by mm -hmm. like, you can do better than that. Mm -hmm. What do you got? You come on, guys, put it together. Like, what the hell? And then, and that's that kind of inner critic. And then there's Ted who's coming at this from 
a more positive, like, how can I motivate these guys by playing on the, like, by letting them know that they've got it in them and, you know, keep working on it and be a goldfish and all that stuff. And, yeah. like, I feel like that's, that's the part that I, I would love to know more about how to develop in myself and in sure. other people is that, that Ted Lasso coach in my head mm -hmm. of not beating myself up when I make mistakes. Not, I mean, I got benched in volleyball in high school because I struggled not to beat myself up. Yeah. I'd get so down on myself. You're a goldfish. Too. Um, I could not be a goldfish. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, just figuring out, I would love to know them when I watch him, I watch that show to try to study that, mm -hmm. like, to try to study, like, how do you grow that seed? How do you cultivate that voice in there to counteract what, for me, comes much more naturally, which is the, the critic? Lucas? <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm I mean, reading all sorts of facial expressions. It's... It's a useful tool, you know, and I think it to develop wisdom to discern like when when will it be most helpful for me to really just identify like as much positivity and, me, and, and ultimately that's just like gratitude practice, you know, like I'm a huge believer in gratitude practice and being grateful, you know, for the things that are surrounding you, especially in circumstances of despair, you know, and distress or something difficult happening. Um, and I, I mean, it, we're trying not to get too clinical here, but I think people who have a sh who struggle to embrace positivity, you know, that's probably because there's some wound there that makes the notion of positivity painful. Scary. Yeah, scary, uh, scary. painful, unfamiliar. Uh, maybe, you know, it's low self-esteem. So like, I'm not worthy of positivity. Mm -hmm. Just in the same sense that people who are very fearful and avoidant of uh, negative emotion and distress uh, and discomfort, you know, that's probably because there's pain there, you know, mm -hmm. something difficult there. And even when we talk about like the duality of, of Ted Lasso, like I don't think the duality of positivity is negativity. You know, I mm -hmm. think it's more so like an, an honest embrace of things that are difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, that like that's the duality to foster. Cause I really don't think there's necessarily any value to just being negative for the sake of being negative right mm. especially in a relational context we know that that's like criticism and breeds contempt which are two horrible traits of a relationship um and so yeah i mean i think there's value in cultivating it and i think that's what a lot of people loved about the show like mm. ted most certainly inspired me to want to integrate more of those aspects especially in my relational engagements you know with other people i think where i'm where i'm I mean, listening to you guys is is thinking about you know Ted coming into you know Rebecca's office every day despite her, you know bringing the the biscuits. The mm -hmm. thought of me doing that's terrifying, right? So that's that fear of showing up, being positive is scary. I think that's that, that was a that clicked for me is being positive and optimistic and just showing up as like this authentically positive self strikes me as is scary. That seems vulnerable to me, and I imagine for somebody who's positive all the time like Ted specifically, I don't know about other people, but Ted, you get the sense that, that the, it's feeling the pain that's scary for him. So maybe, and I'm not yeah. afraid of pain. And that's like, like I don't I find that, I don't find that scary to go into a painful place. I find it scarier to show up as this like, in the face of negativity yeah. to be like. Well, and that, let's, let's take this too. Uh, the positivity doesn't necessarily mean no pain, right? right? And, and it looks different for people, right? And, and I, again, I could be a lone soldier in the living room here uh, on this, but I, I do see that Ted feels, right? Mm -hmm. and, and in those hardships, but, he's, but this is who he is. Just like yeah. Rebecca can be hard and maybe hard and on the exterior yeah. or whatever, but that's who she is. And I think Ted hurts, um, he just is, that's who he is, you know, that's, See, and that's and I okay. That's where maybe I disagree. I think Ted is afraid to feel Oh, pain. yeah, that's why he's having so panic attacks. That's why I think he's afraid to, crumble, to go right? to the dark space. But there was a I cool, think that's scary to him. There was a cool parallel process of him and Rebecca, where, like, as Ted was coming yeah. more into, 
like yeah. confronting difficult emotion. Mm -hmm. Rebecca was coming more into, into the, like the so benefits there's the duality because I definitely identify yeah. with Rebecca a whole bunch. Oh yeah, like she's great. Yes. and shout and out I'm, Roy Keane before yeah. I forget to miss it. Probably my favorite character in the show. He was brilliant. <laughs> um, who? who what, Roy. Uh, Roy. Oh yeah. Um, He's good. Who was actually a writer on the show who casted himself for this character because he knew he was the only one who could who could fully actualize it, or he fell in love with the character mm -hmm. he made. It was like this is who I want to be. Um, but you know what you were saying a moment ago. I think that helped me refine my thinking around in the sense that I would like for somebody who struggles to like make biscuits and bring them into someone's office daily as a means to join. Like I would guess that person at one point in their life tried to connect with someone through positivity and was rejected. And there's a wound there. Um, and people who struggle to bring their pain to others, there's probably an instance at some point in their life where they brought pain to someone and they were rejected, mm. you know? Yeah. And so like, kind of like that, uh, that initial wound, you know, type thing can have long-term lasting consequences on how we operate. Yeah. And it's like you said, it's like, does this feel safe or does right. this feel like a risk? So the messages you got early on about what was a safe way to be yeah. in the world? Or what if you're just good? Like, what if it's not a consequence? <laughs> like, what if the positivity in bringing biscuits is just not a consequence? But what he wasn't good. It's not good. He deteriorated. No, no, but at that time, like we're talking about, right? Like, <laughs> like I love the discussion, right? Because I'm going, like, it's all, it's all so good, right? It's all relevant. Yeah. It's all important. Um, and at the same time, like, it's it's okay, right? Like it, it doesn't mean no hurt, doesn't mean hasn't been through something. Or what if they, what if, what if they're just, friend, what if they're just good? What if? Right? Then, then they wouldn't be having panic attacks and we wouldn't be breaking, but this breaking is, down their psychology. Yeah, I'm talking about <laughs> before the panic attacks. Like well, you know, early on with the biscuits, right? Yeah. The persistence and she wasn't interested and mm -hmm. he just kept coming. That was great. Yeah, right? And That's so like, amazing. But what if, what if that was just a, a harbor of, I just like, meeting people and I'm this yeah. is who I am just like she was standoffish and kind of a bitch right yeah. and, and that that's was, the problem that I would cool. say this is who I am like I think that's what was problematic is the forced illusion that this is the totality of who I am and there's no other aspect to me like that's what caught up with them that's what got them and so like even coming into like his duality it's like Ted was Ted never stopped being Ted mm -hmm. you know it's like all the things we love about Ted as a coach like those didn't go away um, and I would argue, like, him, again, going into the discomfort just emboldened him and empowered him. Um, but I'd say one thing I definitely learned today is uh, what clients to refer to Scotty and what clients <laughs> to refer to you. Because they're two very different clients. Yeah? Uh, yeah, hmm. yeah. And which that's ones I'll good. keep for myself. Because <laughs> some people need, you know, and that's why we all have different styles and different methods, because we all need something different, and there's value within anything. Um, we just got to figure out what's authentic to us. and. I think that was the story of Ted. Well, I want to thank both of you so much yeah. for talking with me. But this has yeah. been great. Like, I feel like I could talk about this forever, and I really, really appreciate the perspectives you guys each brought. Thanks for having us. I, I love your Ted. family room. Have you back. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Awesome. Come back anytime. <laughs>